And I get to introduce to you guys today a gentleman that is, uh, you have to understand it, how I look up to him because of who he is, who he is as a father, guys, who he is as a person, who he is as an individual leader in this business, and who he is as a friend. See, I, I saw him back when he was an ETL. I'll never forget this. This is lodged into my head, right? And he's down, and we went down to San Diego, and I brought my family there. My mom and dad were there to see the business. My daughter was there, her husband. I, I had the clan, almost the whole clan there. And this individual got to the front of the room, started speaking about vision, leadership, and about the business. I, I honestly thought at that time he was a regional director or a regional vice president. I had no idea who he was. All I knew was because birds of a feather flock together, I saw leadership in him. I saw mentorship. I saw everything that I wanted to be around as a business owner. And then I found out he was an ETL, and I was like, this guy's going to kill it. And I watched him promote TC, the RD. I watched him go through all that, and it's just been, it's, 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 it's been a blessing for me. Okay? So with that being said, I'm going to introduce him right now, but I, I, I have to get ready for this, guys. You don't understand. Um. Because actually all the way up here in Fresno, California, in the central part of California, and he's all the way down in the southern part of California, word travels. Word travels so much, they told me that I got phone calls today from Southern California from some of the old firefighters that I know. They said, Chris, we, we need help. Fires are, are erupting down here in California all over the place. They're erupting in hotels, in front rooms at Starbucks, and we can't contain them all. So before I introduce this guy, I only do this when it's time to get serious. Because we're going to get busy today. We're going to get busy because of what's coming. So I, But that being said, this is the crap we had to put on to go in the house, structure fire. So today, I get to introduce an individual I have always looked up to since the day I saw him speak about this business in San Diego, California, Mr. Julian Lewis. Before we even get started, uh, I, I need to let all of you know, those of you that have the opportunity to, uh, to work with Mr. King and his wife, Rose, you guys get to work with him personally, you are blessed. Um, don't take it for granted. He has a heart of gold. He loves to help his business partners earn money, not just because of the money part, but he loves to see people's lives change. He's a family man. He loves his grandkids. I'm telling you, one of the, one of the, most special people that I've met while I've been involved with ACN. And so I appreciate that warm welcome and i um, excited to see you on here as well, sir. And I got a surprise too. So thank you very much for those kind words. And I appreciate you uh, from the bottom of my heart. Now, um, ladies and gentlemen, I am very, very excited about this morning because of what we're gonna be talking about. And I think it's something that needs to be said uh, before I get into that information, let me give you a little bit about my background for those of you that don't know me. Again, my name is Julian, and prior to getting involved with this company, I was the senior systems engineer. I was working roughly 80 to 90 hours a week. That I didn't stutter. That's not a joke. 80 to 90 hours a week. <laughs> I was averaging 50 to 60 flights a year. I was beyond busy. I didn't have any time for myself or my family, but good fortune came my way. I was introduced to this project by my first mentor in this industry, who shared with me a system that allowed even someone as busy as me to build this around my crazy work schedule. It allowed me to have a blueprint and enabled me after working hard to come home to my family and most importantly, become the type of father that I felt my daughter deserved. And so this morning, I'm gonna be talking about the mechanics. I'm gonna be breaking down um, how this business works, talk a little bit about system, and you know, mindset is important, everything. Mindset is the foundation of what you do. 
But once you have that mindset, if you don't know what to do next, it's very difficult. So I'm gonna talk about the mechanics and the whys behind the mechanics. So a lot of times what I've heard in AAC and as trainers that say, hey, this is what you do, but they never explain why. And for me, it was frustrating because I like to know why. I don't know about all of you. Does anyone here like to know why? I don't, I don't just wanna do something. I mean, I, I'll be coachable, I'll do it, but, but, but it's not like we're, we're in a war. You, uh, if we're in a war, you tell me what to do and you're the sergeant, I'm, I'm going to do what you say because I want to stay alive. But if we're preparing to do something and you're training me on something, I'd like to know why. So is everyone excited to know why today, why we do certain things in the system? Is that, is that cool? All right. So I want to talk about uh, the first thing we're talking about is team building. Because sometimes people say, okay, well, you know, I, you know, I see I like the idea of team building. That's cool, you know, overriding residual income, but I'm uncomfortable building a team. I'll just focus on customers because that's my lane. That's what I like to do. And I'll approach people about becoming a customer, not building with me. I don't, I don't want to bother people. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to bug people about doing something that, listen, those are all lies that you tell yourself. I'm just going to be really blunt with you um, because uh, you can't yell at me right now because you're all on mute. Those are lies that you tell yourself. And I'm going to ask you as someone that cares about you to stop lying to yourself. Here's why. You can't build if the truth isn't your foundation or starting point. If you're lying to yourself, you don't have a reference point to build from. You're building on sand. So the first thing is stop lying to yourself. Talking to anyone about the business, whether it's customers or whether it's business partners, is the same thing. Whatever you condition yourself to believe is more fun or easier is just a lie that you conditioned yourself to believe. It's a narrative that you've been running around playing a character in. Only from, from today forward, I want you to stop lying. And here's what I mean. When you speak to someone and you only talk to them about being a customer, you steal opportunity from them. I'll never forget, I, I, I listened to an old, this was on a, a, a CD. Do you guys remember what those are? So I, I, I listened to a CD that was actually copied and Sharpie written on it. And it said, Danny Volanino. I didn't know who that was when I was brand new in the business. Um, so I listened to it. And this dude had posture. Like he had posture, he could tell you, this is what you're going to do. And then the way he said it, people would say, yes, I'm going to do that. It was just the way he was, he had posture. But I remember him talking about how if you reach out to people and you talk to them about being customers, you're selfish. I'll never forget that. He said, you're selfish. He said, because you're cheating them out of the opportunity to say no to an opportunity. You're not giving them a choice. ACN is all about choices. See, what I love about sorting is when you realize that, it's a game changer. When you approach everyone first as a customer and they say no to being a customer, here's, here's what they're doing psychologically. So think about this. Tom and Susan, think about this for a second. If I approach you about becoming a customer and for whatever reason, it's not attractive to you. And then I say, well, hey, you can be in the business with me. The first thing you're going to be thinking is, well, I just said no to being a customer. Why would I want to get into a business and have people say no to something I just said no to? No, thank you. But check this out. If I, if I ask them if they're open to an opportunity and they take a look at the opportunity, but they say no, but through the presentation, they see that there's, an op there's, there's a chance to save some money. I can say, hey, you said no to the door of opportunity, but would you say yes to saving some money and supporting me in my business? I have a better chance of them saying yes. Because I gave them the choice. See, what most people don't realize is when you present, you're presenting a choice to either make or save. When you go after someone as a customer, you're eliminating a choice. 
which means you have less chances of them saying yes. Why would you do that? I'm not in the business of getting customers or getting business partners. You know what I'm in the business of? Asking people what they like most. That's called sorting. So I'm gonna break down something real quick. We're gonna take a look at team building. And if these look new to you, if, these, if you've never seen these slides before, shame on you, because that means you've never seen a training on the second uh, Saturday of the month. So I just said that out loud. So just in case you didn't see them, you didn't have to put yourself on blast. Um, um, if you don't know what putting yourself on blast means, Google it. Um, I'm not gonna go there right now. Some of you are laughing. Um, and you know why. So if you take a look here, we're going to talk about team building. Okay, I'm not going to break down the numbers. We know if we build a team, we can make overriding residual income. And that's true. What I want to talk about is the simplicity in building a team. The simplicity in building a team means all we have to do is get qualified first, which is simple to do with your own services. It's so simple because these are all services that we use and services that maybe we don't use yet, but we need. So we can get ourselves qualified with our own customers. It teaches us the process of becoming a customer. It teaches us the things that our customers are going to see. And it's very simple. And then we have a Zoom meeting or a home meeting. You see that little house up there? So there's either a home meeting or a Zoom meeting. Guess what both are? Meetings. I'm not the guy to tell you don't do a home meeting or don't do a, a Zoom meeting. I personally, wait, wait. Can I be really blunt with you? Personally, I think it's weird. I think it's weird when someone says, no, you do this meeting. No, don't do that meeting. Do whatever meeting floats your boat and, and sits well with you so that you can build a business. You know what both of those meetings are called? Exposures. Anyone that has an emotional attachment to one or the other needs therapy, okay? I'm just gonna be 100% honest. You have an emotional attachment to how somebody exposes, you need therapy. So. Leadership, you we do it so we can get plugged into the leadership training and generate your first check. And it's a seven day game plan. So, you, so that means you do that in your first seven days, right? And then you rinse and repeat. And you rinse and repeat. That's all you do. That's all the business is. That's what building a team is. So let's break down what that looks like in real time. This is what it looks like in real time. You see where it says soft opening? private business Zoom or private business reception, home meeting, Zoom meeting. Remember, both exposures. So from, from this point forward, I'm just gonna talk about the meeting, all right? So why do we call it a soft opening? Because in the very beginning stages of your business, the first people that you want to introduce, if you're brand new, so if you're not brand new, so Rick, Rick, we've been together digitally for a little while. So if you're not brand new, Rick, this is for who? Your brand new people, right? So if, if they're having a soft opening, a soft opening is for your that, that new person's closest contacts. Why? Because those are the people that they're going to try to talk about the business to without you. And if someone's trying brand new, trying to talk to their closest people, Without you, you know what they're going to get? They're going to get uncensored opinions. And those opinions could be good, but probably are not going to be good because that new person doesn't know how to explain the business. So what happens if the closest people to the new person gives them all negative feedback? on what they're doing, and those people have the most influence on their life. Poof, the brand new IBO is gone. Either they, they disappear physically, they block you on every social media platform and they won't take your calls, or they stay in, but they check out mentally. And you know whose fault it is? Ours as the leader. You know why? Because we didn't have a soft opening. We didn't help them to make a list of their closest contacts. 
in my team, we call them the flat tire friends. Flat tire friends are if you were, it was two o'clock in the morning, raining, and you couldn't get a hold of roadside assistance, and you needed to reach out to a live human being. These are the people that you can call that might curse you out on the way to picking you up because you called at two o'clock in the morning and it's raining, but they'd still come get you because they love you. Okay. That's what we call flat tire friends. So those can be family members, close friends, closest coworkers, flat tire friends. Why? Because of the closeness, the influence, but also because of the understanding of the schedule. Well, what schedule are you talking about? I'm talking about this, their schedule. You know what I know? I know my, my brother's schedule. He's one of my flat tire friends. I know when he's working. I know when he, when he starts work. I know when he takes his breaks. I know when he takes his, his workout um, his workout breaks. I know his first workout is um, <clears throat> his first workout is cardio, and then his the second workout is resistance. He does fasted cardio and fasted workouts, and I know exactly what time they're at. Why? Because he's one of my closest people. You guys get what I'm saying? So I don't need to figure out the schedule of my brother. I don't need to figure out the schedule of my best friend. I don't need to figure out my schedules, my closest people. So you know what that means? I know when they're open to take a phone call. So it's a handful of people. And here's how we invite those people. We use a great, the great news announcement script. And I'm gonna shock you guys with something. And as some of you have been on trainings with me before you know this. We don't call first. We text and ask if you can receive a call. Here's why, because that's what good manners is in today's world. I was born in 1980, I'm 42 years old. I remember a time when there was no such thing and all we did was call first. I remember a time when someone being in your town and in your neighborhood meant they were gonna drive by, stop by, pop by, and you'd be excited to see them when they rang your doorbell. I remember a time when someone rang your doorbell, everyone got excited and they would run to the door. But that is not the, that is not the, the mindset of society today. And you have to know that or you become awkward in your communication with people. You show up at my house unannounced, that's offensive today. You call me before you, the only people that call me randomly um, outside of my mom, okay, I'm be real, my mom still does, but the only, the only people that call me randomly are people that are trying to sell me something. And so you know what I don't do? I don't pick up. The only people that call my house phone are salespeople, and it's digital. They just go to a voicemail. It's like they go to some digital purgatory or something that I've never, I never listened to. So so understand, we text first because people, that's, that's good manners now. And so here's what it looks like. So that's the why of that. We text them something that's exciting and interesting. OMG, for those of you that don't know, I'm sure every one of you know, that's oh my gosh, oh my goodness, or whatever you wanna call it, OMG. I re I'm really excited. I have great news. When you have two minutes to talk, if you got that from me and, you are, and, you, and you're my close friend and you're working, be honest. I need to see this. Be honest. Who would be a little bit nosy about what I'm talking about? Who would already be excited even if you didn't know what I was talking about because your close friend is excited? Although, how many of you wouldn't text back you would try to call back already because you're just that nosy. Do you get what I'm saying? So this works. What I'm sharing with you works. It's psychological. It, it has nothing to do with other than the fact that people are nosy by nature. So if I say, OMG, I'm really excited. I have great news. When do you have two minutes to talk? You're going to tell me. And guess what you're telling me? The time for me to call you. So now I don't have to say, well, like, I just called my friend and he didn't pick up. I don't have to do that. This is called being smart. You ever heard of work smarter? This is called working smarter. So, so when you do the first step 
and they tell you when they have two minutes, guess what you do next? You schedule the time to talk. And do you call them, does the new person call them by themselves? No. You do a three-way call with your mentor sp or sponsor. And then your mentor and, or sponsor is gonna give them an, an exclusive invite to a soft opening. You know who has soft openings? Traditional businesses, restaurants, listening parties for albums. Get, you, know, you know why? Because they want their closest people to see or experience it first so they can get the opinions of the people who mean the most to them. Is this making sense to everyone? So it's just not an acing or a network marketing thing. This is a real life thing. Now, check this out. Once you do that, they're gonna be on the meeting. So they're gonna be on the presentation. They're gonna, it's gonna be, it's gonna be exclusive. When I do it, I say, listen, I'm working, I'm working with Heather and she's, she's extremely excited. I'm, we're, what, what I'm doing as a coach for Heather is I'm helping her to launch a new business. She's very excited. And what, what we wanted to do is get a few people that she values, that whose opinion she values to take a look and tell us what they think. Now, she, you probably want to know all about it right now, but she is not allowed to even speak on it until the, until the soft open, the unveiling, so that we can, we can accurately get and survey people's opinions. Sounds like real business to me. I don't make it weird. People get excited. Oh my gosh, this is exclusive. Heather, I'm so excited for you. And it's exclusive. You picked me? People love exclusivity. You picked me? Oh my gosh, and I can't wait. Can I bring my wife? People are going to start asking you, can I bring the dog too? Like, can, can I come? Because it's exclusive. And then you have your mentor who you edify, present. And at the end, they're gonna ask for the opinion. And what does the opinion look like? Well, I'll show you. What category are you in? We wanna get your opinion. Do you lean more towards supporting your friend and becoming a customer? Do you lean more towards this is interesting, I like this, but I have a few questions. Or are you like Catherine? You saw it makes sense and you're ready to get started. Either category is fine with us. We would just love your opinion to see which way you lean. No pressure, just sorting. Well, let's talk about the other meeting. What's this other meeting? It's the grand opening. That's the PBR. That's okay. If you have a if you have a traditional business like a restaurant, and you have you're having a grand opening, put it in the chat. Who would you invite to a grand opening of a restaurant? You want to know? If here's a hint, it's it's on this page. If you don't know, who 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 would you invite? <laughs> everyone, T, exactly. You would invite everyone. Would you discriminate? Would you say, well, I I'm you know I'm having a grand opening of an Italian restaurant. Let me just look for people that like spaghetti. Let me look. No, you would invite everyone. We wouldn't do all that weird stuff that we do in ACA when we overthink. Overthinking is toxic too. Just so you know, okay. And if and and. Look, I'm an amateur at the Bible. The last time I checked, worry is not for us. So you're overthinking it. You're, you're, you're actually creating a self-fulfilling prophecy of failure. You don't want to do that. So 
make a list of everyone. And guess who we're going to invite? Everyone. You want to reach out to everyone. The person with the most exposures wins. Here's some numbers. 50% track this. 50% will respond. So let's say I, I reach out to 100 people. 50% will respond. So that's 50 that will respond. Out of the 50, I know half of them will be open to coming and can make it. So that's 25. Out of the 25 that say yes, they'll make it, 12 to 15 will actually show. So numbers game. I don't have to worry about my emotions because I know the numbers. So if my emotions start doing this, I put my emotions on pause and I say, look, my feelings are valid, but it doesn't change the truth. The emotions have nothing to do with the numbers. And once you understand that, you can get all the results in the world. That's, that's the way this works. Here's the why behind it. And, and so I used to hear, I used to get frustrated because I used to hear some people say, well, in traditional business, you don't have to do these things. And I, I realized because for some of you don't know this, um, during the pandemic, I also built a traditional business. And, and we broke six figures in our first six months. First quarter this year, we have a pipeline of 2.1 million. But you know what I did? I applied the same philosophies that I learned here because these aren't network marketing philosophies. These are business building philosophies. So here's one that I heard. I don't understand in a, in a traditional business, and they don't even say that, they say in a real business. You ever heard that before? In a real business, I don't have to talk to my friends and family. I do. You know, that's not true. In a traditional business, when you have a startup, the first round of raising, pre-seed, for those of you that really know, it's called the friends and family round. You know who you talk to? I mean, it's in the title, friends and family. This is what I'm saying. People lie because they're insecure. And you know what you do? Your friends and family give you investments of like to help you to start up or they become your what? Customer. So that means they either partner with you in business or they become a customer. This is hilarious to me because people that don't know convince others that don't know. In other words, the blind leading the blind out of financial freedom. And, and, and the reality is, is that a grand opening, a, a, a extremely grand, you can make a lot of money before the grand opening just with your, your, your friend, friends and family, but a grand opening in traditional business is called an IPO. What's an IPO? It's an initial public offering. What happens at an initial public offering? It's when a company goes from private to the public offering shares to the public. If you ever seen anybody getting out, looking all silly with stars and dollars in their eyes and they're ringing this bell somewhere in New York, they're doing an IPO. <laughs> and what does that mean? That's usually when the founders have an exit strategy because when the shares are purchased, they're, they're gonna make a lot of money. So why am I telling you all this? It's because it doesn't matter what you do, these rules apply. So it starts with you. It really does start with you. You have to make a decision. And because of that, I'm gonna leave you guys with five minutes and, and I'm done, five minutes of one of the, one of my favorite and my first mentor of all time. I listen to him every single day in my CD player for my first two C CD player for my first two years in this business. Every day when I was in the car, 
I was gonna be stuck in traffic anyway. Every day I listened to him. And I and I I memorize songs that I don't like. Who's ever heard songs on the radio like, oh my gosh, this song is terrible, but they play it so much that one day you're doing some work and then and all of a sudden you're like making my way outside. You're like, what the what, wait, what is that? Why am I singing this song? What is going on? Or you hear something and, and you know all the words. Because you're always listening. So why not listen to something that will actually help you in life? Okay, so check this out. You guys ready? Five minutes to this. Don't go to sleep. I have a good comment for your notes. Now's the time to fix the next 10 years. Now, sometimes you have to come to grips with reality and with truth. That's what was good for me when I met Mr. Schoff. I was 25 years old, he was 44 years old. And he brought me a wealth of experience and he started asking me the tough questions. Big question, he said, are you reading the books that's gonna take you where you want to go in the next five years? Excellent question. So you wanna make sure. I would assume for all of you to get where you wanna be in the next five years, you're either reading the right books or you're not. That's kind of a brilliant statement, right? You're either engaged in the disciplines or you're not. But here's what we don't want to engage in, disillusion, hoping without acting, you know, wishing without doing. So the key is to take a look and say, where am I? What could I do to make the changes, to make sure that I can take more certain daily steps toward the treasure I want, the mental treasure, the personal treasure, the spiritual treasure, the financial treasure. I don't want to make any errors. Now's the time to adjust my daily program to take me where I want to go. You might draw a little circle. This is where you are. 10 years from now, you could be here. Or 10 years from now, you could be here. And the difference in 10 years between here and here could be significant in money and lifestyle, treasures, equity. In 10 years, an incredible difference. But right here, a small difference in the change of discipline, the change of thinking to start you on this journey versus this journey. Now, it's also very important intellectually to know whether or not you're headed this way or this way. And once you decide, 10 years from now, I think that the gathering of my intellectual and personal and spiritual and moral and economic treasure may not be that great. The key is to start right now making these changes to walk this new road. But here's what's exciting to me. Just a few daily disciplines makes a great deal of difference in one year three years, five years, just a few daily disciplines, whether you wind up here or here. Good question. 10 years from now, you will surely arrive. The question is where? We don't want to kid ourselves about where. We don't want to kid ourselves about the road we're walking. I had a day shortly after I met Mr. Schof called do not kid myself anymore day. I don't want to go disillusioned anymore. You know, I was using the cross finger theory back when I was 25, 24, 23. I finally decided that the cross finger theory was not going to get me what I wanted. That isn't where the treasure lies. That I'm going to have to make sure which of these ways I'm headed. But a few reading disciplines and a few disciplines of mind and a few disciplines of activity. And you can make all the difference in the world whether you wind up here or whether you wind up here. But just a few changes. Sometimes we get the idea that we're doing about 10% and there's about 90% more that we need in order to make the difference for our fortune. And probably the opposite is true. We're doing enough things to have bought and shared in the good life so far. And maybe all you need is that extra 5%, 10% of intellectual change, activity change, a refinement of discipline, a refinement of thought. And all we need is the ideas to make those simple changes. And the equity starts gathering in one year, three years, five years, 10. So here's one of the key questions of the evening. Starting tomorrow, what are you going to do that'll make a change in your life's direction? Good question. What are you gonna do starting tomorrow that'll make a difference? Now see, if you don't do something starting tomorrow that'll make a difference, guess what? It's gonna be the same. <laughs> And see, that way you can guess what the next five years are going to be like. Look at the last five. Because the next five are going to be like the last five, unless you, major key, tomorrow, change it all. Or change a little, or change something, 
or don't change. It's choice time. You can do whatever you want. But it's nice to know any day you wish you can change your whole life. What can you do starting tomorrow that'll make a difference? Good question. What can you do with economic chaos, massive disappointment? What can you do with a broken heart? What can you do when it won't work? Good question. If you want your life to change, here's the source of it all. Ideas plus inspiration. Now, ideas are not that far away. Everything you need is within reach. Right. Did you guys like that? So <clears throat> it's the questions. See, the questions is, is where I had to lead to. What? Because it didn't work for me in the beginning. Well, what do I do when it doesn't work? What can I do now? Where can I go now? How can I chop this down into small incremental pieces and not think about the whole, but only think about what I have to do in this moment. Those are the conversations, not just for ACN. Those are the conversations for a happy, healthy, and successful life. And oh, by the way, happiness is an inside job. And success isn't a destination, it's the journey. Science has proven that we don't get as excited about the result as we do the journey and people that embrace and actually are fulfilled by the journey have a better and more fulfilled life. Enjoy the ups, enjoy the downs. The challenges that you laugh at later that are learning lessons that get you to where you are today. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you got a lot of value out of today. I'm excited that I was able to be with you this Thursday. Uh, to help you to kick off a great weekend tomorrow. And I look forward to seeing each and every single one of you over the top um, because we know the bottom is ready too crowded.